The opening tip is won by Grove City. The Wolverines get possession first, and we are underway from the Robert S. Carey Center. Gordon McConnell swings it to the left side, man-to-man -man look defensively for St. Vincent. Coming out in the opening defensive stint. Kick to the corner. Mackenzie Black's three is short over the hoop, and it'll be possession for St. Vincent. Oh, you'll see that Mackenzie Black likes to take that shot from beyond the arc. She is 11th in three-point percentage. Um, in the PAC, shooting at about 31.6%. Man-to-man look for St. Vincent moving left to right. First offensive possession for the Bearcats. It's Kayla Slavenic swinging it to Maria Morgan. Now back to Aaron G. and Cola. Faking the 15-footer from the elbow, driving into the lane and around the rim and just out was that shot by Jenna Lafko. In transition, Grove City trying to buy a quick bucket, but Maria Morgan had it plucked all the way. Not really any numbers, but running the floor really well as Paige Montrose can't get it. Offensive rebound followed up by Maria Morgan. Long two on the baseline. Can't find its home either. We've seen a lot of misses. It, this game has good pace to it. And there's some very open looks for both these teams, too, in particular for St. Vincent. Just can't get anything to fall. Yeah, only one day of preparation for St. Vincent to prepare for the Wolverines as a slicing. Jess Bowen is able to get the first basket of the game. 2-0 is the lead for the Wolverines. Again, St. Vincent game, St. Vincent's game against Washington and Jefferson postponed till Monday. So only Tuesday is a prep day. Usually Monday would be the off day for these guys. And a contested shot. It ends up being a foul on Kate Balcom. Her first, team first of the quarter. And going line, to the line for a pair is Maria Morgan. You mentioned uh, Kolar at the beginning of this one. She is dressed. Um, Missed a few games, nursing a leg injury. She is dressed on the bench. And, you know, <clears throat> as the first one's made there um, by Lafko, the one thing that I want to say is that uh, she is such a dynamic player, such a good player, but if your team is having success without her, maybe don't put her in until you need her. Just make sure she gets as much rest as she could possibly get, maybe the thinking uh, from the coaching staff for St. Vincent. Maria Morgan hits both. She's been money at the line. Hasn't been there a whole lot this season. 10 of 11 going into the game. And St. Vincent should have forced a turnover. It should be over in the back. The referees are going to have a little chat. Shelly Foos is questioning the call. Regardless, her opinion doesn't matter a whole lot. Again, on the over and back call, it's where the basketball ends up. So the ball was into the front court, tipped backwards, and as soon as it crosses that line, it's it an over and back it's call. It's not that it has to touch. It just has to cross that line. Yeah, as soon as it crosses. Right. And See, some Vincent. people think that it has to actually touch the backcourt. Well, I'm, Shelly Foos might right. be one of those she, people yeah, right, right now, the way yeah, that she's It's just whatever disgusting. crosses that, that line. Regardless, it ends up in a turnover for Grove City. St. Vincent applying a little bit of pressure after the made foul shots. It results in a first turnover of the contest. Roughly two minutes gone here in the first quarter. Tied up at two. Kayla Slavetic tried to change that. That one tips. Aubrey and Morgan, no. Official says it'll be off the hands of Mackenzie Black, and it stays with the Bearcats in the front court. So Slovenic will be the trigger person on the baseline right. Slings it all the way back to General Lafko between the circles. And a fresh 30-second shot clock for St. Vincent. Lafko on the wing. To Morgan off the screen. Into the block to Giancola. Guarded tight by Laura Buchanan. Buchanan pretty lanky at 6-3. Eight on the shot clock. Lafko resets. Now with five. Gets a screen to her left. Utilizes it. Three seconds. Turnover. Here comes Bone the other way. No numbers. Trying to avoid a trap, and she traveled. Picked up that left pivot foot. And a second turnover in as many possessions for Grove City. Yeah, Shelly Foos is making sure her, her team does the right thing. She is going to be the most... Uh, Angry slash passion that I've seen her in a while in a game. Morgan in the corner. Uses her dribble trying to shake the defense of Mackenzie Black. Now it goes to Kayla Slavenic at the top of the key. She has to reset, loses the handle. Good screen there from Giancola. Lafka with five on the shot clock, picks up her dribble. Montrose with the shot fake. Kick out, corner three. Good if it goes. And it's nothing but net from Kayla Slavenic with the three-pointer. Oh, that's... That's something that she can excel at in Slovenic. And she stepped up nicely 
Yeah, ever since Kolar went down, and she can really shoot. That open look from three right at the buzzer. She was able to get off just in time and nothing but net. Montrose with a monster block. Here come the Bearcats in transition. Three on one. Now Morgan off the window and in. Seven to two. St. Vincent leads it early. Four points from Morgan and a three from Slovenic makes it seven to two. And then a held ball called after an immense amount of pressure right at the timeline by the Bearcats. A couple of turnovers early on has been the difference. St. Vincent racing out to the seven to two lead with roughly six and a half to go in the first quarter. Rob Longo, Rob McKinney with you. Of course, coming up at halftime, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one with Shelly Foose, the Grove City head coach. Donnie Chedrick has a sit-down with her. Montrose tried to do it all in one motion, but good defense and active hands by Jess Bowen. Interesting, I got a little sneak peek of that sit-down, and one of the questions that popped up was Foose talking about the pressure of St. Vincent and facing the Bearcats. She mentioned that from her playing days all the way now is – Slovenic misses that one, that the timeline has always been instituted, but there was no 10-second call. And I find that, oddly enough, right now is there's been a couple of turnovers because of that timeline in the 10-second rule getting the ball across midcourt for the Wolverines. Good bounce pass onto the block for Buchanan. Can't quite get the roll, but the lanky arms gets her to the line as she's fouled with a couple of ticks under six minutes to play in the first quarter. Well, Maria Morgan was down low on the right block trying to defend against the 6-3 Buchanan who has a whole foot on her. Uh, Morgan, if I'm not mistaken, picked up that foul, right? Or no, it was on... Uh, Giancola picks yeah, up her Giancola, first. but Morgan was right there in that area uh, putting some pressure on Buchanan. Standing at 6-3, she can get a ton of rebounds. You saw her win the, the opening tip. She is a force down low, and that's something that St. Vincent, I'm sure, hasn't seen too often that size down low be a problem for a lot of teams in the PAC is Buchanan hits both. She's hitting at about a 73% clip from the line. Buchanan, she's a two-sport athlete at Grove City. She also plays volleyball. Three-time All-PAC honoree in that sport. She's appeared in every game at Grove City. High off the window and in from Kayla Slovenic though the other way. And she's got five early ones. Are you kidding me? She had a pretty stroke from three. That time she's able to work in. Finesse move off the backboard. Love it. Montrose with the strip. Lapko in transition. Thought about a three. Instead gets dejected. Going to the rim. Powerful play there by Grove City's Mackenzie Black. Now check that out. That was Kate Balcom. Balcom, yeah. And Balcom is super athletic. And, and she was our player of the game against Waynesburg very early on in the season. And she could pretty much do it all. Catch and shoot three off the inbounds. A little bit too far to the right. But right time, right place for Montrose. A little late on the... Cut pass, and it results in a turnover. Bowen going one-on-one. -on -one. Off the right side of the glass and in. Four points for her. It's been a four-person game so far. Maria Mo Morgan and Kayla Slovenic for St. Vincent with all nine points for the Bearcats on the other side for Grove City. It's been Bowen and Buchanan. That one can't rattle home. Here comes Grove City in transition. It's McConnell. Gets around one defender. Thought about a kick to the corner. Finally, it goes to Mackenzie Black. Back to McConnell and back to Black. Still 15 on the shot clock. Lots of contact on the screen. Trying to go to work as Balcom. She's rejected by Paige Montrose. Lots of tight defense in this one early on, midway through the first quarter. Part of the reason why we have a 9 to 6 ball game. Well, Montrose has some height, does she not? Yeah, six Standing foot. Standing in at six foot. Yeah, that one. Just a pure block against a, a move that looked like Balcom had her fooled. Went inside, then turned to the right and just tried that uh, kind of that hook shot off the backboard, but wasn't able to get anything on it. Blocked away from the six foot Montrose. Seven to shoot. It's a two if it goes, and it's good from Jess Bowen. Now nine to eight all of a sudden. Six points for Jess Bowen. Slovenic almost got trapped in the corner. Instead, it goes to Carly Gilgis, who checks in for the first time today. Also checking in is Stephanie Vaughn for the Bearcats. A couple of new faces on there. Still the same starting five for the Wolverines. Slovenic did a good job trying to shoot over the height of Buchanan. And a foul called 93 feet away from the hoop. And guess who's coming in here? Kolar. Madison Kolar checking in for Aaron G. and Cola, who just picked up her second personal. We'll see if... Madison Kolar, the 5'11 sophomore who's averaging close to 15 points a game, can provide Groves St. Vincent with a spark over Grove City. Just a sophomore, but 14.9 points per game. I mean, she's 
the fact that they have her for two more years is certainly a blessing. Uh, it makes every other team cringe in the President's right, Athletic right, Conference, right. that's for sure. Grove City working around the perimeter. Does McConnell. Thought about the cut pass. Instead, it's Bowen. Bowen with four to McConnell. McConnell drives the lane, has to get a shot off, and never touches the rim. They're going to say that St. Vincent had clear possession, no shot clock violation. Either way, the Bearcats come away with it. Probably works out better as St. Vincent in transition tries to hit a three. That one doesn't go from Taylor Boring. Bree Van Volkenberg in the game for the Bearcats as well now. Kick out to the corner. It's black. Floater. A little too strong. Good positioning, though, and they're going to call a foul on Allison Podkle. Mm. Podkle had the positioning. And Shelly Foose is a little bit confused. She was looking at the official saying, who did you call that foul on? Well, the board says that the right. foul was on right. Taylor Boring, Taylor which would make Boring. more sense. Right. Yeah, it is on Boring. Yeah, see, that's where I was confused, too. I looked at it, and I was like, I don't yeah, the think The official that's pointed right. the wrong way. Right, right. All right. So now we got to get the book straightened out a little bit here. A little bit over three minutes to go in the first quarter. 9-8, St. Vincent leads it. Officials correcting the mistake. Gives Jimmy Petruska a chance to sub in Paige Montrose. Stephanie Vaughn. It'll be Mackenzie Black to inbound here, baseline right. She floats it up to Podkle. Hand off now to Lindsey Stanforth, who just checked into the game. Back to Podkle. Good spin move in the lane. Gets the roll. Grove City with its first lead of the game, 10 to 9. Seems like uh, Grove City, their shots are just falling. It, it, too many misses from St. Vincent here. Taylor Boring with the finesse move. Gets her first bucket of the game, and we have a little bit of a seesaw affair early on with under three to play first quarter. Well, as I say that, she makes it, huh? <laughs> I should be a coach. Maybe we'll get you to Tony Romo level one day. <laughs> that went a little too strong from Sedona Campbell, but an offensive board by Lindsey Stanforth. Black resets. Now the Wolverines go around the horn on the perimeter. Foul line extended. It's Bowen that holds, averaging 12 points a game. Hand off to Podkle. Running that motion offense, gets an open look around the rim and in. From Lindsey Stanforth, her first basket of the game as well. Back up to a 12-11 lead for Grove City. Wolverines pressing. Maybe a little bit overzealous. Two defenders in the same area. Long two on the way. Look who's back, Madison Kowar. Her first basket. Wow, that was a pretty stroke, huh? That was something else. Hasn't played in a few games, and then she's able to make that shot contested there about, I'd say about 16 feet out and nothing but net. And uh, the one thing I do want to point out is that uh, Kolar and um, Taylor Boring, the only two that have points on the board right now, mainly because their starters are not in for St. Vincent. The fact that they can have 10 people that they feel comfortable with in a game coming off the bench, the amount of depth that they have, uh, it's fantastic. One of the reasons why they're the best team in the PAC. Good screen and roll there from Laura Buchanan. She's got four points. Grove City hanging around in this one. That went off the feet out of Kolar, and look who's coming. Kate Balcom. Looks like she was shot out of the cannon after she picked up that steal. Two points for her, finally. Hard to believe that she's only had two points here. Right. With almost a minute to go in the first quarter. Lots of pressure. Open look for Van Volkenberg. The jumper's no good. Too strong. Kolar, foul. Basket. Counting. Doing what she does best. Fantastic there from the right block. Able to fight off that foul. Still make the shot. And the one thing that you want to see from uh, Van Volkenberg is, or Volkenberg, rather, um, is, is whenever she's over there, and towards the left of the hoop, you, you don't really just want to put up a shot and, and try to try to hit the net. You want to at least try to get it off the backboard, if, especially if you're contested. Don't try to go for that nothing but net material. You know, your best bet is to try to bank it when you're in a little bit of trouble like that. Kolar coming off the bench today. First time at the foul line. Front of the rim, no good. An 87% foul shooter who hasn't played since January 5th against Bethany. Good positioning on the block, double move. Not enough on it from the freshman, Allison Podkle. 
approaching a minute to go in the first quarter. Grove City hanging on to a 16-15 lead. Good double and coming away with the steal. It's Balcom. In transition, it's McConnell. Picks up her dribble. Good ball fake, open look from Bowen. A little too strong. Another offensive rebound for Grove City. Wolverines have a little bit of a height advantage in there right now and are using it to perfection. Long two from the baseline, a little too strong. Lots of contact, nobody able to grab the ball, but Montrose is able to finally come away with it. Roughly a two second difference between shot clock and game clock. Still 16 to 15, Grove City. Kick out Van Volkenberg, all in one motion, going for the layup, but she swatted. Another block from Laura Buchanan and a held ball is called by the official. Arrow favors Grove City. It seemed like uh, Volkenberg tried to go underneath Buchanan when getting that shot off, not traditionally just going straight up the hoop, kind of just up and under. Can't really do that when you're going up against somebody that's right. six feet yeah, three Yeah, I think either way, she's going to get her mid on it and, and swat it away, especially at that height advantage. And that's that's such a great advantage for Grove City. She is so good defensively. She also can shoot pretty well for being that size, 6'3". Eight seconds to go. The shot clock is off. Wolverines with one final possession, four to shoot. Kick out. Got to get a shot off from McConnell. Good if it goes, and it's off the mark. So a uh, wild first quarter finally comes to an end. 16-15, Grove City leads it.